Here's Dan Ives explaining why he thinks Tesla is going to make massive profits. Check this out. You know, I was just looking at some of the numbers for Tesla. And, uh, you know, I know that people b don't buy Tesla because of the cars. But and we've had this discussion before. Cars still account for three quarters of this company's revenue, Dan. So, you know, yes, you're, if you're looking at the robo taxi future, I guess with Tesla, it's always a timeline question of when all of that stuff is going to actually start to be more meaningful. Yeah, look, I mean, Julie, if you look demand stabilizing, you know, relative to what we've seen, especially over the last year, and China, I think that's an uptick. So that is important just in terms of the car business and even margins upticking. But the reality is, me and you have talked about many times, like, this is going to be a golden chapter for Tesla in, in terms of autonomous and robotics, the AI roadmap. That's why you own the stock. That's why I think this thing ultimately is a double you know, over the next 12 to 18 months. As it plays out, Robotaxi scales and autonomous. It's going to be the best, you know, ultimately when it comes to consumer, best application out there. Okay, Dan, how do, break this down for me. Explain this to me. How do they make money from autonomous? Because right now they own all the robotaxis, right? So they're making whatever small service revenue there is from those cars. But then ultimately, what is that? profitability picture look like? And again, when can investors expect it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, and, and obviously when, right? Like that's the big question. Look, I think first, if you, if you focus just on one year out from NVIDIA to Microsoft to Apple, I mean, we go to every tech company out there, I think you've missed that transformational move, right? For Tesla, you gotta look out two or three years. And ultimately, look, it's, can you get to 500,000? a million vehicles out there. That essentially, it's gonna be a cyber cab, it's gonna be a robo-taxi network. Right, but, do, but do, they, do they own that network or does someone else own that network? And like, what's the profitability of that network? Because a robo-taxi, at least as my understanding, is not a cheap thing to run, right? Mm -hmm. Look, they're gonna own that network. I mean, like, right, it speaks to what I view as probably the biggest competitive threat to an Uber. You know, if, you, if you look out over the years, what Tesla's going to do here. And remember, there's going to be their own network. And then if me or you, if we have a Tesla and we're at work, we could ultimately put that Tesla into the network. So while we're at work, it's actually giving rods out, right? And, you're, and then ultimately, you know, that speaks to the broader effect that's going to happen here is that this is weighing out what's going to be this biggest chapter of growth ever. So you can look at over the next one, two years what earnings looks like. I could argue there could be growth power 12, 15, 20 hours earnings But when you look out. And that's why I think this is a stock that should be green today, not red. There's a lot that has to go right between now and then. The other thing that has to go right is the Optimus robots, which uh, you know Musk talks about. But again, like who's the customers for these robots? I've talked to robot people who say, the real applications are not going to be in humanoid robots at all. They'll be in other functional robots. Yeah, I mean, look, I think first on the factory side, th that's clearly going to be an application when it comes to on, on the robotic side. But the biggest thing is going to be on the consumer. I mean, it's our view, and we're not talking 10 years now. We're talking like two, three years that like it's going to become commonplace to have robots in houses. And I think that's the important thing. That's what, look, that's what Tesla's going Dan, after. Dan, to do, for what? What are, the, what are these robots in our houses going to be doing? In two to three years, you're telling me you're going to have an Optimus in your house. What, what is it yes. going to do? And again, that, and it's my view, like, it will be doing the wash. It could be taking the dog out. In other words, like, it's going to be doing functions that in a house, these are going to become more and more commonplace over the next decade. And Tesla's gonna own that robotics vision as well as the autonomous vision. That, that, that look, that, that's, the, that's why you're paying Musk a trillion dollars in, in terms of you know, if he hits all the goals. That's why Musk is the most important asset for Tesla. It's the future and what I view as a physical AI play, there's Nvidia and then there's Tesla. And just quickly, Dan, um, you're you're predicting that the that he'll get approval for that pay package. Oh yeah, I think. Look, I I think that that's going to overwhelmingly be improved because look, it just comes down to like, 
he is the only one that could lead Tesla into this chapter. And everyone understands as an investor, you need Musk, wartime CEO, locked him, set the high bar relative to the targets. Look at the last one. He hit all of them. I believe Dan Ives is correct and that the robo taxi business model will be financially powerful and the unit economics will make it one of the most compelling opportunities in tech. A robo taxi generating around 60,000 miles annually could bring in over $100,000 in revenue while operating costs, including cleaning, maintenance, and depreciation, would be roughly $20,000, leaving 80, 90, even $100,000 in profit per vehicle. Typically, driver compensation accounts for 70 to 75% of traditional ride hailing costs. So eliminating that expense allows robo taxi operators to offer lower prices while maintaining higher profit margins. The cost per mile for a robo taxi could drop off by more than 50% between 2025 and 2030 due to declining hardware costs, operational improvements, and economies of scale. Dan Ives is predicting robo taxis could be worth a trillion or more dollars, and this is why. The maths is simple but powerful. Every single robo taxi becomes a money printing machine that works around the clock. Think about your personal car. It sits unused on average around 23 hours per day, which is wasted potential. A robo taxi operates continuously and can generate income every single hour it's on the road. The profit margins are stunning compared to traditional transportation. Right now, when you take an Uber, most of your fees go straight to the driver. Remove that cost and suddenly you can charge passengers less while making more profit. That's the competitive advantage Dan understands. Tesla could undercut Uber's pricing and still make more money per ride. Over time, as the fleet grows to hundreds of thousands or millions of vehicles, you're looking at a revenue machine unlike anything we've seen before in transportation. Remember, Uber only has 1 million drivers for the whole of the US. If Tesla has millions of robo taxis on the road, that's gonna change the game completely. What makes this especially interesting for society is the accessibility angle. When transportation costs dramatically, mobility becomes affordable for everyone. Elderly people who can't drive anymore get independence back. Low income families who struggle with car payments and insurance suddenly have cheap, reliable transportation. Urban areas with poor public transport get a viable alternative. The economic impact extends beyond just Tesla's profits. When people spend less on transportation, they have more money for everything else, which stimulates the broader economy. Now, beyond moving people around cities, Dan also predicts robots will handle household chores within just a few years. He thinks the timeline for humanoid robots is moving much faster than most people realize and that companies are already planning home deployments. And it's not just Tesla, Figure AI moved its home testing timeline up by two years. Figure AI CEO stated the company thinks it can get robots ready to do most things in homes autonomously all day by 2026. By 2026, humanoid robots could be assisting with chore like laundry, vacuuming and dishes at least in beta testing. And futurist Peter Diamandis predicts their presence could reach 10 billion worldwide by 2040 with labor costs as low as $10 per day. It does feel a little bit like science fiction when Dan mentions robots doing laundry and taking the dog out for a walk in two to three years. But multiple robotics companies are literally preparing to put these machines in people's homes right now. The technology leap that happened with AI over the past few years changed everything. Robots, including Optimus, can now learn tasks by watching videos instead of needing thousands of lines of custom code for every single action. That's the breakthrough that makes household robotics practical. The positive societal impact could be transformative for families. Think about all the hours that people spend every week on repetitive chores, folding laundry, loading dishwashers, vacuuming floors, and taking out the trash. Those hours add up to entire days lost each month. If robots handled those tasks, families get that time back for things that actually matter. Parents could spend more time with their kids instead of cleaning. People working multiple jobs could finally get proper rest. Elderly people could stay in their homes longer instead of needing assisted living just because they can't manage daily chores anymore. The cost point Dan mentions makes this realistic too. If these robots eventually lease for a few hundred dollars per month, that's comparable to what families are already spending on housekeeping services or the time value they lose doing chores themselves. 
It's not about replacing human connection or creativity. It's about eliminating the boring, repetitive work that nobody actually enjoys. When you free people from drudgery, they can focus on learning, creating, connecting with others and pursuing meaningful goals. The key is making sure the transition benefits everyone, not just wealthy households. If robotics companies can scale production and drive costs down quickly, like Dan expects, these helpful machines could become accessible across income levels. That's when you see real societal transformation. Imagine single parents not having to choose between spending time with kids or keeping a clean home. Imagine people with disabilities getting the independence to live on their own. That's the future Dan is describing and the timeline seems to be closer than most people think. Most people pour money into ads people ignore. YouTube changes that, it builds trust, authority and a real connection at scale. One law firm we worked with landed 33 clients in just five months worth $330,000 from their YouTube channel. If you run a business, this is one of the most overlooked opportunities right now. Book a call with me below and I can show you how we can make it happen.